Hello stars, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to another vlog day. And I want to go ahead and give a special shout out to my stars. My stars. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you guys and gals so much for keeping me passionate and motivated about keeping Luminous Star channel active. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to the channel. Please mind that description box below for further details to today's vlog. Stay tuned for the vlog. Uh, our incubator of life. Okay, now guys, today I'm going to be answering a question from a current subscriber. Now, this question, I had to really stop and think about it a little bit, um, and it brought back some memories for me, I have to say. I still, excellent question. Tea time. Mm. Woo, okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this particular question definitely had me thinking a little bit and really when I say it had me thinking a little bit it brought back some memories right okay the question pertains to narcissists keeping relationships toxic and why they say uh, the why so is uh, you know I don't want to be far reaching with that one and guessing so with the why aspect of my answer I will go with some of my own experiences and I will go with some of the research I've done. Okay? So you guys bear with me. I'm going to answer this question as best as I can. Okay? Now, I'm going to give three parts of the question and also give some examples. Alright, here we go. Now, first point is, narcissists are people who are pretty much children who are wounded. Some people may debate that, but narcissists from my research, right, they are pretty much, if, if some of this is from my own experiences as well, they seem to be childlike all the time. They seem to be childlike no matter how old they get. But also from my research, uh, it has been found that they are wounded children who lack emotional and social intelligence. Yeah, uh, so when, they, when we try to hold them accountable for maybe something they did, maybe something they said that really hurt us, maybe for, you know, like narcissistic injury of some type. They don't really, really guys, they don't get it. Narcissists don't get why we're hurt. They don't get why we're upset about something that they did or said. Why? Because, again, they lack emotional and social intelligence. They lack emotional maturity. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So voila, you have wounded children, right? And they are stuck there. If they're 55, 65 years old, 75 years old, you will find these individuals, they seemingly are childlike, but not in such a pleasant way. <laughs> you know, they, if they don't get their way, they seem to, you know, like have a tantrum. And they also, you know, they do anything for narcissistic supply. If you are a person who's mature, right, you think before you act. You do more responding than reacting. Narcissists, again, they seem to be wounded little children who misbehave, right, pretty terribly. <laughs> they, they misbehave because, again, they lack the social and the emotional intelligence, and also the emotional maturity that most of us have as adults, as responsible adults. We have that. No, uh, narcissists do not have that either because as children, their development in those areas are seriously retarded. Now, I can go into some examples of why that may happen. I'll give you one. Uh, as children, maybe um, they had a narcissistic parent and the other parent was a codependent. More than likely, the codependent parent was the one that spoiled the child. So they're accustomed to getting their way. They're accustomed to uh, having things go their way. When they ask for something, they get it. Again, because the, it's usually the codependent parent that spoils the narcissistic child. Now, narcissistic child, let me, um, let me really clear that up. It is my opinion that children are not born narcissistic. They're, they're not born narcissists. They're not. This is something that they're taught. 
Again, if they have a narcissistic parent and they have a codependent parent, that child can end up learning how to become a narcissist or a codependent. Very fascinating. Sometimes the, the child will go in the direction of becoming a codependent. Sometimes they'll go in the direction of becoming a full-blown narcissist by the time they're adults. Very, very interesting. Uh, because the first seven years of a child's life is very important because this is where a lot of the information that's being downloaded into the child's subconscious mind really, really blossoms. So it kind of, it helps that child to, let me put it like this, that information that's downloaded, that determines what type of person that child will end up being as an adult. In other words, that subconscious programming is going to play out and you will see it a little bit more clearly as an adult. So narcissists can end up um, being full-blown narcissists. Actually, you have a full-blown narcissist if the co the codependent parent and the narcissistic parent, usually they have everything to do with that. Yeah, I want to say that. Even though they're human beings, they make mistakes, but when you're talking about an, especially the narcissistic parent, yeah, they can, they, they're human and they can make mistakes, but usually a lot of the things they do is very intentional, okay? It's not that they just happen to be doing it and, and no, no, no. I'm speaking of the narcissistic parent. They usually are the ones who do things more intentionally to harm a child. Don't have to agree with me, but I, I'm speaking from experience as well, as well as some research, okay? So again, that's the first point. The first point is the narcissist, the narcissist, right from the beginning, codependent parent, narcissistic parent, they probably took more to the narcissistic side of the parent rather than the codependent side of the parent. Because they that person who's a narcissist right now, they could have easily have become a codependent instead. But they resonated more with the programming of the narcissistic parent rather than the codependent parent. Yeah, um, so pretty much narcissists, they tend to be wounded children in an adult body. Point number two. Now, what are some of the things that narcissists find appealing? Because that's very important. That goes right into how they keep things toxic in a relationship. That's going to be my third point. Second point, though, what do they find appealing? Well, narcissists find enablers very appealing because they're the, they're the first go-to for flying monkeys. That's another video. I've done another video about that, about flying monkeys, so please check that video out. Again, narcissists, they find codependents, enablers, codependents, very attractive. They're very appealing to the narcissists. Narcissists, they find, these are the people that they find appealing because they are the ones who usually are a means to an end to get the narcissist supply. Okay, in other words, they're more successful to the narcissist because they are already preconditioned. Okay, and this usually starts from their childhood. Empaths are one of the people that narcissists, very, they are very attracted to. Empaths, codependents, enablers, and people pleasers. Those four individuals, yes, Narcissists absolutely are just drawn like magnets to these type of individuals. And again, these type of individuals, it usually the conditioning starts when they are younger, particularly really when they're children. So that, that program is playing in the subconscious mind of these four types of individuals. And the narcissist has an excellent radar for that. So boom, instant attraction vibrational matches, okay? And I also did a video about vibrational matches. Please check that out. And these four individuals tend to be preconditioned to please or to provide narcissistic supply to the narcissist. They're already preconditioned to do so. So the narcissist really doesn't have to do a lot of work. Yeah, they don't have to do a lot of work at all. So since the narcissist finds these four type of individuals very appealing, the narcissist becomes involved with them, and they already know right off the bat. The narcissist knows right off the bat, more than likely, this is going to be a lot of supply 
that he or she is going to receive from these four types of individuals. And it usually does play out that way. So third and final point, okay? And this is gonna get into why they keep the relationship toxic. Well, because all that toxicity feeds the narcissist. Remember when I said the narcissist is wounded? They are wounded children. So when they find people who will supply them, such as the four, individual, the four individuals that I mentioned, <clears throat> when they find those people and they become involved with them, they're getting a mega supply. Seems like that's the gift that keeps on giving. When the narcissist is involved with those type of individuals, it pretty much is the gift that keeps giving. Because those four type of individuals, they're already preconditioned to just like clockwork give the narcissist mm -hmm. all the supplies he or she wants. They're preconditioned already. So here you have the narcissist who's a wounded child. Those four type of individuals that I mentioned, more than likely, they are wounded children as well. Here's the thing though. Those four type of individuals that I mentioned, it is more than likely that they will wake up, become more conscious, and they will change for the better. For the narcissist, forget it. Is slim chance to none that a narcissist wakes up and realizes that he or she has a problem. Right? Because they're self-righteous. That's one of the classic traits of a narcissist, self-righteousness. So more than likely, this person is never going to see that they have a problem. Whereas the other four individuals, types of individuals, they have a better chance of waking up and, and realizing, oh my gosh, there's a problem here. Let me take steps to change that. The narcissist, forget it. They're not that type of individual. They're wounded children, and they are so wounded that that toxicity that goes on in toxic and dysfunctional relationships is like food to them. It's like water to them. It's like oxygen. Mm -hmm. It feeds them more than you really realize, more than I realized at one point. Yes. So that wounded child who is the narcissist, they're getting fed. This is why they keep the drama going. That's why they keep the toxicity going in the relationship. They absolutely do have to have it. They have to have it. If they're not getting that supply from you, they'll move on to somebody else and will do it with no problem. The narcissist is not only a wounded little child in an adult body, they are addicts. They, they deliver those narcissistic injuries over and over because they're addicted to that. They're addicted. So every time they hurt you, they take a hit and they're getting high. Every time they hurt you, every time they set you up for failure, every time the narcissist is setting people up for failure, hurting them by blaming them, projecting their stuff onto them, insulting them, whether it's blatant or um, uh, subtle, doesn't matter. That's all supply. That's all food for the narcissist. So they get high. Every time they see you react instead of respond, when you go off because of something they did or said, they absolutely love it. They're getting more energy. They're getting more supplies. Basically, they're getting all, more supplies from you. So that wounded little child and the narcissist is getting fed every time there's toxicity. Every time there's drama in the relationship, they're getting more supplies than maybe they expected. So this is why narcissists tend to keep that toxicity going. They keep the drama going. Because that wounded little child in them is first of all an addict, okay? And secondly, they are attending to that wounded child's need to have the toxicity. They have to have it. Remember when I said that child is a child who always gets this way? Yeah, the narcissist is a wounded little child who expects to always get their way. They will do whatever they need to do to get their way, to get that supply. So I hope this answers your question, you know, why narcissists tend to like toxicity um, and why they, they tend to keep it going. But everyone who's watching, thank you so much for watching and come back and see me again. Till next time, stay tuned for more videos and take care of yourself.
Wow, I certainly hope everyone has enjoyed that video. And I want to go ahead and give everyone a friendly reminder. Every Thursday and every Sunday, there are new videos that come out on this channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell. This way, every vlog that comes out and every video that comes out, you'll be the first to know. Not only that, when I go on live, you'll be alerted. That way you can join me. Okay, now having said all that, stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos.